Hello, everybody. Lawrence Fleming here again, and I hope you're having a great day. Now, if all the signs that we've been following are correct, then we will soon be gone. But you say that the Jewish holidays are all but over. Haven't you missed the timing this year? Actually, no. Stay tuned with me, and I'll explain why the best choice for a rapture day is still ahead of us. A Christian should be excited for these times. And if you're not a Christian, stay to the end. And like I always say, if you like this video, click like. If you want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. And of course, click the bell icon and you know when I release a new video. You can also help me by sharing this in other videos with your friends that might need God's help. I don't ask for donations, just prayers. So let's go ahead and get started. I am still working on my mystery series, but with a high watch day coming up, I thought I should stay focused on getting everyone prepared, just in case. Dr. Burial has a great corrected timeline, and if you haven't seen it, check out his channel. God follows and fulfills prophecy on holy days throughout the Bible. He likes following the calendar. And the next unfulfilled day is the Feast of Trumpets. According to the Jewish calendar, it's past. The problem is, is it's wrong. It's a month off, and they know it. And the feast days start on October 7th and go to the 8th, as I've discussed that before. And the Jewish holidays are designed to get God's chosen to focus on God. I think we should all focus on him daily, of course, but especially through this upcoming October. It's a possible high watch day on the 7th and 8th. Turn with me to... Daniel 12, 3. Those of you who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up these words, seal the book until the time of the end. Where many will run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Well, knowledge has definitely increased and we're flying all over the world now. And we look at other events, we are definitely in the time of the end. That means the words and the book can be unsealed. We can understand these things that Daniel wrote about. God, of course, wants repentance and acceptance of Jesus Christ. He doesn't care that we follow the law if we would at least follow Jesus. Now turn with me to Isaiah 1, uh, verse 13. Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbath, and the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity in the sacred meeting any longer. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hates. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Because your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. And learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, 
you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. It's a powerful words. Now is the time to accept Jesus, especially before the rapture. If you don't, none of these feasts and sacrifices will save you. They will only anger God more. Now, what's he think about the rulers of the world? Not much good to say here. Turn with me to Psalms 2.1. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. And against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bounds to pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. And he shall speak to them in his wrath. And distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare my decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Well, you do need to put your trust in God. You need to put your trust in Jesus personally. You need to invite Jesus into your heart. And you can speak to Jesus right now because he is listening. And if you mean it, then you too can be saved, not by your works, but only through accepting the free gift of salvation. If you think that's for you, speak it from your heart and repeat after me. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sinful ways and ask you to come into my heart. I accept your free gift of salvation that you paid for with your blood on the cross. I want to be a Christian. I want to be born again. I want to have eternal life. Now, if you said these words with meaning and with feeling, you're a Christian. If you just said the words, that's not enough. It talks about repentance. That basically means a new mindset to set your eyes on God and take them off the world. Now we don't have a lot of time. I'm hoping that everybody is right with their timing, but if they're not, if you prepare yourself and it doesn't happen, the worst is, is you prepared yourself and probably helped somebody because you can't get right with the Lord without helping somebody. So until we meet in the skies, God bless.